Welcome to Jazz Punk, one of the most random games that I've ever played in my entire life. Now, most of you maybe haven't heard of it, but I'm gonna tell you what this game is now. This game is taking place in a world where everyone is looking like a cardboard box. Well, it's like a combination of computers and cardboard boxes. The only person here who is not a cardboard box is you. You are a human in a world of computers and cardboard boxes. When the game starts you wake up in a coffin. You have no idea where you are or where you are supposed to go, but very soon you are going to find your boss. He's called the Director. The Director sends you on missions. The first mission you'll have is to invade Russia. As you can see this game sets a very serious tone. If you need me I'll be in the wine cellar. And expect the entire game to continue like this. This is also the place you go to get new missions between the levels. And, uh, well, different events are taking place all the time. This game also features a supervillain called. Badum Tsh! I am known as the editor. The editor. You only see him for like two or three levels, but he's a really, really mean guy. He's so evil that he drugs you and even cheats at sports. I'm so surprised. You, on the other hand, is a human. A perfectly normal human. Well, relatively normal, anyway. You never see yourself, but you get to see your limbs quite a lot. This game also features a lot of other NPCs. Did you ever notice that, like, water is really wet? And as you can see, most of them are incredibly intelligent and host a lot of information. This game also confirms that all Russian words are the same. And from where do I recognize that robotic voice? Hmm. The amount of NPCs are huge, and some of them have very unique personalities, and some even have small, small, small little side missions, like this one. The five main levels of this game are Russia, where you can see here when I'm walking around in the park. You will also come to China, where it's perfectly okay to smash vases and even smash the inhabitants so they turn into flies and fly away. And yes, this game will continue like this forever, or at least until you finish it. When you're finished in China, you get to this small resort. Baby Star, you're different. I changed my mind, you can keep him. Your boss sends you here, but of course you end up working, as usual in video games. Well, this part wasn't working. The game also features this crazy world, which is supposed to be inside of a computer. And uh, I don't have so much to say about it, just watch this for yourself. We also have this part of the game, we are running around in the evil man's apartment. And as you can see I made quite a mess here with this aquarium, but I'll blame it on someone else. This game also has some mini games like this toenail painting part and well, like I said, you can make quite a mess in this apartment. And if you don't want to run around and destroy the entire place, you can also relax in front of the TV and watch this wonderful show. In this world, every TV show or cinematic show or movie seems to be quite delicious. I have asthma. The worst thing is that the movie they're watching is actually a lot better than some normal movies I've seen on the cinema. Just goes to show what this world is made of. This is gonna be very bad. Oh yeah. And as you probably understand about this game, it's a free to roam game. It's split up in levels, but you can do almost whatever you want. You can run around and cause mischief, or other people can cause mischief to you. And it also features quite a lot of violence. Not very bloody as you can see, very cartoony and funny, but still violent. But don't worry about that guy, he's fine. You can even force feed this poor little guy with his toothbrush. 
If you want to try a relaxed game where you can walk around and have some fun and do a lot of pointless stuff that doesn't award you in any other way than being themselves, then this is definitely the game for you. And it also contains a lot of parodies of other stuff. Brain dead, anyone? And it has a lot of mini games too, as you can see here. When you're walking around looking for treasures, finding all the treasures does absolutely nothing other than get you an achievement. And it makes fun of the players too, which is of course what you can expect from this kind of game. This game also has some bigger side quests, and they are actual quests where you need to go off and do stuff. And they award you with random stuff that you randomly use and randomly might have a use for in the randomly next level. But, like I said, you never have to do it, so you can just rush around. If you just rush the ga entire game, you can probably finish it in like 15 or 20 minutes or something. Maybe less. And yes, it features a physics engine, and I'm wreaking havoc with it, as usual when I'm playing games. It got out of hand, a little bit. Even if the quest rewards don't affect your gameplay in any way, they still unlock some very nice events and stuff like that in the story, or whatever you're gonna call it, because I don't think this game has any story. And like I told you, it has a lot of parodies, and many parodies are aimed towards the gaming community. It even has some... I know you hated me for that. But on the other hand, I hated the game for doing that to me as well. But like I said, this is kind of a parody of Slender or some other horror game. Uh, except you're going to a pizza cabin. Yeah. And it has some other games it's making parodies of as well. Do you remember this from GoldenEye? <laughs> and this little classic? Where have I seen it before? Poor little froggy. Welcome to Wedding Quake. Now, what game can this be a parody of? Well, this is definitely my favorite minigame in this game. It could almost be an entire game of its own. It even has some fake bots that pretend to be players. Oh, and this brings back memories. Except they weren't so greasy. Now, where have I seen this before? Some of these games you just wish you had forgotten, though. So. Or, well, it's not the minigame that's the problem. The minigame is actually better than the real deal because you don't get a headache from playing this. We also have this game that I don't think is actually a parody of a game, but more a general parody of towards all the cat owners out there. They don't know what's going on. Simulation. Yes, that's what this entire game looks like. It reminds me of a simulation. You. But I think I'm gonna round up my review here and see you next time. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Patreon, and YouTube, and Twitter, and my blog, and everything else that I have. What the hell is this? That's so unrealistic! You can't just grab, reach out to something like this and let the other person grab it outside of the screen. It just doesn't work! <laughs> thing I have ever seen. That is so unrealistic. Hey ha ha. Ha ha. I mean lol. Quick, look behind you. Over here, Polly Blank. No, oh, over here. No, no, a, li a little more.
Bye. 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 Bye.